The situation on the border between Russia and Ukraine today took a turn for the worse as the uh, people in the Donetsk and Luhansk, what's called self-proclaimed uh, republics, uh, have begun uh, evacuating people from their countries into Russia, in the Rostov area. Both of them have been claiming that they've been attacked. And uh, on the Russian news uh, on uh, Friday night, they claim that war is imminent and that very soon that the Ukraine forces will be attacking the Donetsk and the Russian people in those areas and they're moving them out now. Of course, there's no independent reporting on this, although you do have both the Russian side and the Ukraine side in the Donetsk area, both claiming that both sides are shooting uh, rockets, artillery, uh, and mortar fire, and other kinds of weapons back and forth. Actually, independent observers confirmed that there is lots of fire going on, much more than normal, but it's, uh, there's a lot of dispute about who's actually doing it. All of this goes to show that the potential for war is now higher than at any time that it's been. We already know from what President Biden has said recently and uh, the uh, Secretary of State at the United Nations Security Council the other day is that there are now potentially close to 190,000 Russian troops around Ukraine. So without question, they have all the force they need to go in there now and pieces are in place to have this what's been referred to many times as the so-called false flag operation to where there is a, a, a claim that the Russian people are being attacked by the Ukrainian forces and that the Russians have to come in. Uh, that is very much still at play and could very well happen. The bottom line here, though, is that Putin, all this is barely dis disguised. Putin is making actions that really kind of show his hand, but make it clear that his bottom line, which he continues to reinforce over and over, is no eastward expansion of NATO into Ukraine. Now, look, we don't like that. There's this thing going around that lots of people are talking that no nation can deprive another nation of its security requirements and it will wants. It has the sovereign right to request whatever security relations that it wants to have. And certainly that's true. But what's also true is that NATO has the sovereign right not to accept them in any country just because they want to come in. And look, it's time for some cold, hard truth here. And the fact is, Ukraine is never coming in NATO. Ukraine will never qualify for NATO. They don't come close to qualifying even now because of the significant virtual civil war being fought within their borders and quite clearly their external border. There's the constant risk of war. No nation can come into NATO if they have a civil war within and the potential external war on the outside. Moreover, the requirement to join NATO is that any country strengthen the alliance. And there is no argument that can be made now or later that having Ukraine in NATO will strengthen the alliance. To the contrary, it will weaken the alliance and make higher the chance, the perpetual chance, that the Article 5 guarantees of the other 30 nations that are already in NATO would someday have to come to the, uh, to the aid of, of a Ukraine. That's never going to happen. I think that capitals all across the world know that. President Biden knows that. That's the reason why he has absolutely overtly taken off the table in the possibility of American troops going into Ukraine to fight Russia on their behalf. So we won't fight now. We won't fight later. Now, what makes perfect sense in that case, given those realities, is that President Biden should just place a moratorium on Ukraine joining NATO. Just take it off the table for the, for the time being. In fact, you can just say, take it off indefinitely. Now then there's potentially room for negotiations with Putin on some of these other issues that we also have an interest in being negotiated. Putin has said he's interested in some of these secondary issues that we have, like transparency on exercises, uh, limitations of, of uh, short-range and medium-range missiles in Europe. Those are all things that are of mutual benefit and we can talk about as long as we get that main one that Putin has just shown already two times in the past, both in 2008 and in 2014, that he's willing to use limited force to prevent NATO from coming up to his border. So the likelihood, the best chance we have to avert war is let's take NATO advancement off the table for Ukraine. And then let's start negotiating other things. That might be the one thing at this 11th hour that could still prevent war. If we don't take this opportunity, the chances are very high, possibly within days, that, the, that a war breaks out and now then negotiations, it's too late and blood starts to flow. For the sake of the people in Ukraine especially, I hope that President Biden takes this opportunity.